All right. Huh? <laughs> Talk about limitless faith. And let's be for real, you guys. In Bermuda, like, we have, like, big secrets, you know. We have all these secrets. We even want people to know what's really going on. This young woman, she stood before you tonight, and she bear herself. You heard her biography, yeah? But one thing about the Word of God, right, it says he or she that is free is like free indeed. That's it. If God is for you, like seriously, like who could be against you? Yeah. So let's give it up for Janika one more time. Indeed. Another powerful speaker. Had you guys up on your feet doing a little dance. <laughs> Our next speaker, M. Wally Moon, Melody Mishari Van Parten, M.A., is an education consultant, writer, poet, activist, and university lecturer, president and CEO of Black History Works Incorporated. Her company specializes in practical application of global African-centered history, culture, and values via academic and community programs, curriculum workshops, and teacher training. She is the creator of the character education program, Black History Workshops for Children, BHWC, known in Bermuda as Ashe. Rights of purpose designed to inspire motivation, self-esteem, and pride. In 2013, she founded Ashe University, an African-centered African adult continuing education program designed to meet the need of busy adults, who we, definitely that's us, <laughs> who desire historical and cultural self-knowledge. Van Putten has written and delivered libations and created African-centered presentations at academic conferences and international gatherings, including the African Diaspora Heritage Trail Conference here in Bermuda, Bahamas, and Tanzania. Various institutions have recognized her work, including Pennsylvania's House of Representatives and the Senate, the City and Mayor of Philadelphia, the NAACP, the National Council of Black Studies, and Bermuda's House of Parliament. She is the author of four books of poetry, including Obama Time, Election Poetry, winner of the 2009 Best Books Award for Urban Poetry, Healing History, Reflections on Race and Forgiveness in Prowls and Poetry is her latest work. So she has done a lot of great work and she's written some books that you all can purchase and use to enhance yourself and to empower yourself. Without further ado, put your hands together and welcome to the stage M. Walimu Melody Mishari Van Potten. Hotep, yes, Hotep means peace in the ancient Egyptian Kemetic language. It is a greeting, and so I greet you, and I will say it again, Hotep. All right, so let me begin with a poem. Since, why, thank you. Since we're talking about relationships and friendship before relationship, let me start with this poem on love. I have loved many, and many have loved me. I have loved and lost and loved and found again. I cannot, dare not explain this penchant for love, but shall only say that it can be sweet, like just ripe fruit, or as bitter as herb root. Herb root like nasty medicine. <laughs> a strong brew of pain and disillusionment. But the sweet well of love is so irresistible, I find myself there yet again. On the journey, the passion, the experience of love. Right, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Friendship before relationship. 
Now, why are we going to talk about that? It's because you are worthy. So let me start there. Say with me, and gentlemen, I know there's some gentlemen in the house, so just, you know, skip the woman part and you can say man. Okay? So just say with me, I am woman. I am worthy. I am worthy because I am woman. I birth children. I birth community. I birth Mother Earth herself. I must be worthy and I must know it if I am to live my destiny. Fulfilling my purpose for being on the planet. I must understand and internalize my worthiness as a condition of my womanhood. Yes, I love myself. Yes, I am worthy because I am woman. So you can see, you can follow along here on the PowerPoint, but woman worthy? Absolutely, absolutely. Next slide. You got to know who you are. Keep going. Know your values. Know your standards. What you will and will not accept. Hello, somebody. Know what you want. Know what you don't want. Know how to make yourself happy. Know yourself. And remember, if you can't do you, you can't do him. <laughs> to know who you are means you know your values, your beliefs, your standards, your goals, your strengths, your weaknesses, your likes, and your dislikes. That's who you are. You got to know who you are. Now, values, next slide, is the cornerstone of beliefs and standards. To know your values are guideposts for living the life you want. Now, we're going to talk about value alignment because that determines whether your relationship is healthy or unhealthy. Okay? Living in alignment with your values is a critical aspect of a successful relationship, and it should not be compromised. Okay? Now, I must say right here that African people were the first people to live on the earth, and they established one of the earliest value systems of Ma'at. Truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, and reciprocity. Now, imagine... I'm sure that some of those values are your values. Are you living with those values? Do you expect your potential mate to live by your values? Okay, because if you don't have value alignment, the likelihood that your relationship will be successful is very small. And we have lots of arguments around it. So to know yourself means, next slide, you are clear about your beliefs, values, standards, goals, strengths, weaknesses, likes, and dislikes. You are clear about your bottom line, what you will and will not deal with. Now, that does not mean that I deal with it today because he ain't going to do it no more. Hello? We got to be clear about what our standards are, okay? what you will and will not deal with. You need to be your own BFF and treat yourself with loving kindness, respect, care, compassion, and honesty because it's about you. Tell the person next to you, it's about you. Tell them on the other side, it's about you. All right. So now, why connect friendship to a romantic relationship? Well, foundational aspects of a friendship are key to a successful relationship. Friendship is a solid building block for loveship, or what I like to say is when the love and dust are gone. 
if you don't have friendship, you don't have nothing. Should I say that again? When the lust, lust, and dust are gone, if you don't have friendship, you don't have anything, okay? You don't, you don't. You want that person to be your friend. So what are the building blocks of friendship? Think mutual, mutual. Interest, affection, understanding, honesty, empathy, sympathy, compassion, altruism, value, standard, trustworthiness, care, and concern. Now, other characteristics would include commitment, kindness, loyalty, respect. Now, the next thing I like to say about a relationship, no better half here. No better half here. Work on being a whole person. Who wants to be a half a person? Why do we say, my better half? No, no, I want to be whole. I want him or her to be whole, okay? And if you're not whole, you got to work on being whole. Healed, happy, creating and living the life you deserve and desire, okay? No better half here. Understand you are complete all by yourself. And a companion should enhance your life, not complete it. Yeah. Right? As you get to know a potential mate through friendship, seek wholeness in him or her. Right? Wholeness. Remember, the only person you can change is the person you see in the mirror. You can't change him. Some of us get in relationships with folks that we know got issues, <laughs> and we think we're going to change him. No, you're not. No, you're not. The only person you can change is yourself, OK? You can accept him, but you cannot change him. Now, what it said is that love, next slide, is friendship that has caught on fire. Ann Lander said, it is quiet understanding, mutual confidence, sharing and forgiving. It is loyalty through good and bad times. It settles for less than perfection and makes allowances for human weaknesses. I think that's a good definition. So we need to take time to know who he is through friendship. Time is a key word. Do not rush this process. Some of us, you know, when we see him and we got to have him, we want to rush from I just met you to I love you till we get married and only three weeks done pass. <laughs> Time is a key word. You want to go through the seasons. That is spring, summer, fall, winter. You want to go through the seasons with this person because it's through those seasons that you find out what are his beliefs, what are his values, what are his standards. Does he have goals and plans for the future? Okay. Marriage is a nice relationship, but that's not necessarily a plan for the future. Okay. And you need to have a goal and a plan. What is his strengths and weaknesses? Are his likes and dislikes compatible with mine? In other words, are we on the same page? Right? Some of us are trying to get people who are not only not on the same page, they ain't even reading the same book. <laughs> now, you know I'm telling the truth. All right? So we need to find this out. And you can only find this out if you go through spring, come on, summer, fall, and winter. You need some time to find out about this person. Some more important questions. Does he make me laugh? Is he kind, thoughtful, trustworthy? Am I comfortable with him? 
How does he handle challenges? That's an important one, you know. You don't want somebody going off just because they had a bad day. How does he handle challenges? Is he supportive and encouraging of me? That's really important, right? Because today we're working women. You know, we're educated, we make our own money. We need people who are gonna encourage us, not put us down, right? So that's an important question. Do I like him as a friend, right? Now, positive answers would be expected from a good friend, why not a mate? Why not a mate? So now, I mentioned earlier that African people were the first people to live on the earth and established ma'at, truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, and reciprocity as one of the early moral ethical value systems. And they had a sacred book called the Husia. Next slide. Interesting wisdom here. Stay away from the aggressive man or woman and take him not for a companion. Take then for a friend one who is true and just, one whose actions you have observed. And if your righteousness equals his or hers, your friendship will be balanced. One of the earliest sacred books giving us advice about relationships. And you know if you take on an aggressive man, you know what eventually happens, right? You don't want to do that. Now, if you find the answers to some of these questions lacking, the first thing I want to tell you is do not waste your time. You cannot get your time back. Six months, one year, three years, five years. You can't get your time back. Your time is precious. And in reality, that's all you have is your time. Don't waste your time. Especially don't waste your time when you know somebody is trifling. You ain't going to change him. Don't waste your time. Resist entering immediately into another relationship, especially if you have been hurt. Unresolved hurts follow you into the next relationship. You know that. You know that. You have to take time for self-reflection, healing, forgiveness when a relationship fails. You need to figure out what your contribution was to a failed relationship. You need to heal yourself after a failed relationship. Very important because you set up the new relationship to fail if you haven't resolved the hurts from the old one, right? So take the time for self-reflection, healing, and forgiveness, and always keep your values in mind, especially reciprocity. Now, reciprocity is one of the universal values. If you're Christian, you say you reap what you right. Now, if you're Buddhist or Hindu, you say what goes around. Reciprocity says that whatever you put out into the universe comes back to you. Even secular science says for every action, there's an equal. All right, so why am I emphasizing this? Because you better believe that if you are in a relationship that's really you should not be in, it will come back to you. And women, we must be sisters to each other. You know he's married, send him home. <laughs> send him home. He ain't got nothing for you but a line. Okay, and if he claim he got more than that, trust me, reciprocity, what goes around, hello, send him home. A half a loaf ain't working. Or what I used to say, your little drop of water ain't gonna cool this hot fire. Okay.
Send him home. Now, <laughs> let me give you, um, since I done said that already, let me give you some marriage wisdom from sacred writings. Because I wasn't too sacred there, I realized that. <laughs> so, the Bible says, let marriage be held in honor among all. And that's Hebrews 13.4. In the Baha'i writings, it says marriage is a fortress for well-being. And the Holy Quran says, and among his signs is that he has created for you of yourselves spouses that you may feel tranquility and relief in her and he has set love and mercy between you. There are signs in this for a people who reflect. So let me read you another quick poem called Marriage. Marriage, it should be loving, caring, secure. Marriage is riding life's waves together through thick and thin, good times and bad, lifting, holding, raising each other up. A mighty friendship, dancing through life just the way we like it. A successful marriage is love unbounded, receiving abund abundant blessings and having thankful hearts. So, let me give you some do's and don'ts on relationships from some folks who know. Respectful communication. Watch your tone and your tongue. Ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about. You don't want to be, no, no, huh? We working on it? Okay, okay. All right, because you, I'm telling you, that repeats in your beloved's head, that tone and that tongue. You got to watch that. In fact, this next one goes right with that. No name calling or unnecessary harsh language. I don't need to mention cursing. None of that. Remember, you, you can't take your words back. You can't take them back. When you say hurtful things that you really don't mean, you can't take that back. You got to have a little more self-control in those heated arguments. Walk away. Zip it. Right? No harsh language. No name calling. Watch your tone and your tongue. Compromise on your differences. Give a little to get a little. And when you realize you're wrong, promptly admit it. Then make amends. You know? And once a disagreement is settled, don't keep bringing it up. <laughs> don't bring it up ever. Okay? That's done. Leave it. Go forward. Okay, no relationship can thrive if you're constantly going back. Right? So some more relationship wisdom from folks who know. Life is an adventure, and every day is a learning process. Right? Learning yourself, learning your mate, learning that relationship. Every day, an adventure. A good relationship should be an enhancement of oneself. But you got to know, men can enhance your happiness, but you must make yourself happy. Yeah, y'all can clap on that, because that's the truth. <laughs> happiness comes from you. Okay? It doesn't come from him. It doesn't come from a new car, a new pair of shoes. Happiness comes from cultivating yourself, your passion, your purpose, developing you, expanding your faith. That's where happiness comes from. And a relationship should enhance that. My sister called this the happily ever after syndrome. Relationships are work, okay? They're work. And you're either gonna work your relationship or it's gonna work you, okay? Never let the romance die. 
That's for the brothers as well as the sisters. That's for the brothers as well as the sisters. You know, never let the romance die. You hear me, honey, in the back? Right, right. Be each other's biggest fan, right? You need a cheerleader. Everybody needs a cheerleader in life. That's what a good friend does. That's certainly what a good mate should do. And then, of course, my own personal favorite, if you can't do you, you can't do him. That is for sure. So let me read you yet one more poem. This poem I, I wrote for my own husband because we met late in life. So for the ladies who are over 40, there's hope. There's hope. I might also add for the ladies over 40 and 50 that you really have to be about living your life. Because at this age, you want somebody who has been living their life so that you come together as whole people, right? No better halves here. So let me read you this real quick. It's called Love Now. Love now at this age. Sweet, tender, mature. Both of us willing and wanting to work it out. Work it all out. Whatever it is, whatever it takes. Love now at this age. An unexpected pleasure like blooming flowers. Godiva chocolates. A serious cup of coffee. Hot. Black. Strong. And might I add delicious. Love now at this age. Romance like no other. To quote Sade, this is no ordinary love. And this is for my Bermuda man. <laughs> so, to wind this up, next slide. He done forgot all about the slides. <laughs> he listening to some relationship wisdom, right? But I do want to say that I'm, I'm wishing you peace, good health, joy, laughter, and loving friendships with one very special friendship that catches fire. Now, you have a handout. You have a, everybody get one? Because this is your homework. This is your homework. Then I want you to take some time with yourself. Um, I got some ground rules here. You want to know what it's about you. You need to know your values and beliefs and standards, right? You need to know your own requirements for a good friend. And then you need to spend some time in personal development so you can see how this dovetails on the excellent presentations given by Couché and by Ganika and how this will also dovetail into our next keynote speaker, Trent. But it is about you. You do have to remember that if you don't do you, you can't do him. So I don't know, do I, do I have time for any questions or should I skip that? Okay, because I know y'all gonna be rude, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Melody Macheri Van Putten. Thank you. All right. Woo! My goodness. <laughs> you guys must be really full now. <laughs> Let's give it up one more time for, for M. Wally Moo Melody. Ms. Shari Van Patten. Talking about friendships before relationships. Mmm. That's a big one. That's a big Because you know how it is. You meet somebody, you know, they got these six pack, they got, <laughs> they got, they got a, you know, a really good looking smile, and it's like. <laughs> Everything just goes out the window, and then on the guy's side, it's like, before they even got a chance to have the conversation, they're like, yo, oh my God, why you don't know? But you know what? 
Friendships are very, very important, and relationships are very, very important. So we want to thank um, Ms. Ma M. Wally Moo, Malady, Miss Sherry Van Potten for bringing it and keeping it real. Yeah. Yeah.